SEO tutorials for 2019. In this video session, I'm going to share with you great insights whereby when you use it, you'll definitely see increase in Google rankings. As a result, more website traffic. And let's take a look at my blog here. Now, your small business website, your e-commerce site, it doesn't matter what type of website that you operate, images play an important part. Not only you can convey messages as to when someone lands on your landing pages, let's take a look at this sample blog. Someone comes, lands here, they don't really know what's going on. And before reading, they may look at images. So therefore, if you use images intelligently, then you'll definitely increase um, visit duration of your website visitor. And then they may think to themselves, OK, you know what? It seems that this sample page is about SEO plugin and so on. They may continue reading, right? But not many people understand, especially you know, most SEO experts, they don't understand how it's really meant to be done. And what happens is most people, when they read about image optimization and Google rankings, they end up using keywords unintelligently. But that's not what you want to do. You want to use them to your advantage. Let's take a look at this sample. I'm actually working on a couple of projects at the moment, but I've decided to actually squeeze this video in just for you. Now, looking at this image, you may think, OK, that looks like a city image, image of a city somewhere. But where? Is it Melbourne City, Sydney, London, UK, New York? Where is it? You see, that's exactly what Google will try to do. It's trying to read the image file name to understand what in the world is this image. Now, taking a look at this sample name here, it says High Rise Buildings, Houston City in Texas. US and some numbers and so on, right? Now, looking at the keywords, Google can say, okay, you know what? It's an image, contains high rise buildings, Houston city in Texas. Now, why name it like that? It's because this entire website that I'm working on, when it's launched, it will be ranking for those keywords, some of them. Keywords like Houston. Keywords like Texas. Make sense? That's one example. Once again, whether you're a small business owner or you operate an e-commerce site, you need to start not spamming the file name, but rather look at the image and ask yourself, can you use some keywords that may help Google to understand what that image is using the keywords? knowing that Google just doesn't look at an image to rank your web pages. It looks at many different things, but images are part of them when you're using them. Furthermore, alt attributes within the image is indexable by Google, so it can analyze the alt attribute. So therefore, when you name your images using keywords and then use alt attributes for the image using similar keywords describing the image, it's an alternative text. Ask yourself, OK, what if you are a blind citizen using assistive technologies to read the alt attribute? Well, then you can say shows high rise um, buildings, Houston city in Texas, US. So therefore, someone relying on assistive technologies just using the alt attribute, they may say, OK, I'm looking at an image of high rise buildings in you know, Houston, which is a city in Texas, US. So they kind of get an understanding of what that image is. That's exactly what Google will do when analyzing your web pages as well. It has to rely on keywords heavily. And surely it's gonna you know, incorporate many different signals and algorithms to rank for a keyword that you're targeting. But keywords are extremely important and images give you that option to use them 
for better Google rankings as well. But remember, image naming is not spamming Google. Because if you do that, like some people suggest, then you're not going to see any results at all. Because Google is highly advanced to work out if someone's spamming or if they're using natural language to name images. So let's go and see what other techniques that I can share with you. And this is very underutilized. And that is, let's say, how to rank in Google in, let's say, 24 hours. For, you know, for rank your fans, I've actually created a video showing you how to rank keywords in Google in 24 hours. And I think, well, 24 by itself doesn't mean anything, right? But let's say hours. Now the keyword hours is important. And that's exactly what Google does. It, it tries to say, okay, when someone searches for these terms, including keyword hours, where is the web page on planet Earth, as in, in Google's index, that it can show that it thinks it's the most relevant. Now, uh, okay, heading tags. They are so underutilized, it's not funny. Why? It doesn't matter whether you operate a small business or an e-commerce site. You just have to blog. Without blogging, you're basically swimming on dry land. Because without blogging, you've got no content. And you're not building your website as the authority in your industry. Once again, whether you're a locksmith, whether you're an electrician, whether you operate an e-commerce site, it makes no difference. If you want to see your website to be the authority, to rank in Google, to bring free website traffic all the time, then you need to blog. When you blog, you have an option to use heading tags. Okay, I'm not going to go into depth as to explain to you what heading tags are. Because it can actually get quite complex, right? Because then we need to go to HTML5 outliner because each document it has to have heading it's an HTML element and that's exactly what your web pages are it's HTML pages so Google analyzes that it doesn't know how to speak you know in natural language it has to rely on HTML which looks like this right so what you provide in your HTML documents till the end of it it analyzes everything within it and keywords are extremely important within that HTML document and heading tags they play a, a different role in an HTML document that means you should definitely start using headings properly now there is two different mentality that you should think about using headings one is you can guide Google as to what your landing page is about, as in the reader can look at this and say, hmm, that's a large um, text. Okay, now this is getting a bit confusing now, right? Because the more I share about SEO, I don't want to shortchange you in a sense that large text play an important part. So does headings. Make sense? So let's stay with headings. This is heading one, this H1. Some people say, oh, how many headings should I have on a document? It doesn't matter, you can have 200 million if you want. It depends on the content, right? There is no set rule, it depends on your presentation and the content. And some people, some SEO experts especially, because they're retarded, they'll tell you to write blog posts worth 1,000 words. If you're a small business owner, try and rank for keywords, your ideal customers, they're not going to read 1,000 long blog, long blog posts. And once again, you don't write for search engines, right? You write for your ideal customers. If that's the case, imagine someone looking for emergency locksmith in Houston. <laughs> Makes sense? Can you imagine that person reading a blog post worth 1,000 words? 
that's not going to happen. So the reason I share that with you is follow rank expertise regarding Google rankings. And one part of that is using heading tags. Whether it is heading one, heading two, heading three, it makes no difference. You just need to look at your website, as in web page, understand the importance of headings, and sprinkle some keywords, but you know, craft your headings in such way that when someone lands on your landing page for the first time, not knowing about your web page or your website, they can understand because the large text, which is headings in this scenario, jumps at them. It jumps at them so they can quickly read that and say, hmm, okay, yeah, okay, you know what? Hmm, in this example, it's about Google. I want to rank in Google. I want to I wanna learn how to rank in Google. The image confirms that. That means they can scroll down, which is the second interaction. Make sense? So headings play a part for user retention, so to speak. But furthermore, they play a part in Google rankings. But don't just leave just one heading one only. For your blog posts, if they're around about four to 500 words, sure, you don't have to keep using keywords. But if you use them, don't just repeat them like this, right? Let's say I want to rank for get on the first page of Google in 24 hours. If that was my target keyword, I'm thinking, OK, you know what? I'm just going to keep repeating that in my headings because it's going to rank my web page better. If we do that, then it's not going to rank your web pages better. Because Google can work that out if you're trying to spam Google. But if you look at how I have crafted this sample one, page one in Google, get your site to page one in Google. But final step to get, makes sense, sprinkle keywords. Video lesson explaining these techniques. I'm not even using keywords there. Right? Make sense? So use some keywords knowing that Google analyzes individual keywords, not the entire keyword all at once. So that means you don't have to keep repeating them, but nonetheless use headings. And when you do, sprinkle some keywords in an intelligent manner, knowing that you're writing your headings to break up content. Make sense? That's what heading is. You break up important parts of content it's only logical and since they're HTML elements Google can analyze them also now this is this insight is for small business owners if you're a small business owner just because you're getting some results does not mean you have to just stay there makes sense if you're a small business owner invest in experience invest in talent but make sure that in 2019, your web pages load fast because that's what Google wants. It wants mobile first index. That means it analyzes how a web page looks in the mobile elements, as in mobile devices. You can use Chrome browser. You can press on F12. You can run audits, but this is rather complex. You can run audits using Chrome and it's going to go and fetch your landing pages. Now, when you do this, do go into incognito window so that the results shown to you is more clear. Also, um, Search Console is once again your friend, even in 2019. I'll show you Okay, I actually end up getting few comments about mobile usability. Okay, that's very tricky in a sense that the new Search Console may show you issues in terms of your website, as your web pages, not rendering properly in mobile devices. If that's the case, whatever you do, focus your attention there. If you have mobile usability issues in 2019 for your website, then you're definitely going to lose rankings and you don't want that. 
you want to increase your Google rankings and using Search Console for various different reasons, you can increase Google website traffic. So then website traffic coming from Google. And one criti critical element here is mobile usability. Clickable elements too close to one another. Now I end up getting, you know, many emails saying, okay, rank you, you know what, help us fix this. I can't, unless you hire me, because fixing this could be complex. So that means if you don't have the experience, don't ignore this. Get someone else to fix this for you on your website. And what does this mean? Clickable elements too close together. That means somehow the links on a website, it's too close together when viewed on a mobile device. That's what that is all about. Okay, once again, whether you have the experience to fix it or not, it must be fixed. Get someone else to fix it if you can't do it yourself because it's hurting your Google rankings because it's hurting people who are visiting your website using mobile devices. Another one, mobile usability. Another one, content wider than screen. What does that mean? That means when a website is viewed, this area is wider. The content you're presenting is somehow coming off the screen. So thus it's wider. How do you fix that? It will depend on the theme that you're using. Once again, you have to fix it. Okay. And usually a web developer can assist in that department. So let me wrap it up. Whatever you do, make sure you use your images intelligently, use alt attributes, sprinkle some keywords without spamming Google. Second part, for your blog posts, you just have to blog. When you blog, go for long tail keywords. You can use Google search engine to find great ideas in terms of long tail keywords. You can see here. Okay, all right, let's see. How to rank in Google without backlinks. Let me choose that. Let's say without backlinks. And that's fairly long, but I can put a space there and say, okay, can I find something even longer? Because I actually did see something even longer before. So exploring Google, okay, WordPress. What if I do A, B, at ranking Google business, okay, let's say 2019. It's just start of 2019, so therefore keywords using numbers such as year 2019. If you end up searching for keywords for your industry and you end up seeing people have searched for 2018, that means they most likely will search for 2019 as well. Create the blog post targeting long tail keywords using rank your methods. You'll be ranking them within weeks using images, using headings properly, sprinkling some keywords and triple checking mobile usability in Google search console. Once again, I speak rather a bit fast because I want to share great insights within short pre period of time. If you haven't subscribed to Rank Your YouTube channel, do so because more useful videos for the growth of your business will be uploaded in 2019. I thank you once again for learning with me and I'll talk with you in the next video session.